the Drager Swede system is two container systems that have been put together. So actually the students are below the simulated four level. So they're in a nice safe environment. We can reach temperatures of 12, 1500 degrees, but where the students are, it's very comfortable and we're still able to observe that phenomenon in a nice safe environment. Okay, as you can see here, we are in the incipient stage of fire development, almost entering the growth stage. As you can see on the right wall, that material is started to break down now from a solid to a gas. In other words, pyrolysis is taking place. Now here we see the smoke overhead moving at a relatively low velocity. The heat being generated is not driving that smoke. So we're still in the early stages of fire development here. Now as the fire is ending into its growth stage, you can see on the perimeter walls how that off-gassing is taking place much more rapidly. And that's because obviously your exterior walls and your ceiling heat up and trying to absorb as much heat as it can, heat up much more quickly than the center of the room. And that's where you get this cave type of effect. You tell the smoke is different on the left and the right than in the center of the room. And what do we do on the fire department? We open the door, give it that gulp of breath of fresh air. Again, when I arrive on scene, I look at that smoke and I try to read and diagnose what stage of the fire am I in right now. In this picture, you can see that the firefighters can actually read the smoke once they enter into the building, what's happening overhead, but also watching the fresh air being drawn past them as they make entry. Now here you can see with the door closed, how that fire is just starving for oxygen and it's drawing that fresh air in through any portal it can, because that's what it's needing. It's needing that fresh air for it to survive. Here again, we're into that growth stage of the fire. The velocity of the smoke is now picking up. In this picture, you can really see the difference between your perimeter walls and the interior, or the center part of that smoke column. Looking up over our head, you can see on the left-hand side, the darker, thicker, boiling smoke. And then look at the center of the room. Again, it's increased in its velocity, but it doesn't have that boiling effect that is preeminent to flashover. Here you can see the fingers in the smoke or the snakes in the smoke, that's rollover. In other words, the oxygen and fuel is mixing to the right level to ignite those gases. Again, you could have rollover occurring over your head, but all you're seeing are the lingering flames right at the smoke level. If you're witnessing that, flashover is imminent. It's coming right behind. And as you see, this room is now being engulfed into fire. Total room involvement, wall to wall, ceiling to floor, it just jumped from four or 500 degrees to 12, 1500 degrees in just a matter of seconds. And looking at this footage, understand that we are below floor level in the Swede simulator in a very controlled environment. Normally speaking, actual structure fire, it's unpredictable. And so it's much different than what you're witnessing here. Now, the new generation of firefighters, I believe, need to get as much live fire experience as possible. Fire departments around the country, it's a good thing. We're not responding to as many structure fires. That's because of fire sprinklers, better fire prevention. So they're just not getting that hands-on experience. So every opportunity they can to witness the different stages of fire development, to actually use your nozzle in a fire situation, they need to take advantage of that as much as possible. I think firefighters are exposing themselves to the flashover phenomenon much more so because we're so well insulated now. We get this false sense of security. We have hoods, our equipment is better. We're so well insulated that we feel almost invincible and we're getting deeper and deeper now into structure fires. Where in the past, we weren't so well protected and when it got too warm, we had to get out of that building. Now we're staying in there too long. We're getting deeper into structure fires and we're increasing uh, the potential of being caught in a flashover. At one point, um, I had nine firefighters, three companies in off of my rig and uh, as a result of this training, um, I was able to recognize a really bad condition. I was able to get in the rig and deploy the horn, and they retreated out to safety, and then shortly thereafter it flashed. And I truly believe because of this training, I was able to make an impact on the outcome of this incident. Uh, the goals of rapid fire progress recognition are to teach firefighters the signs leading up to flashover. It's not the flashover itself, we want to identify the signs leading up to that, and that is the changing smoke conditions. We also want to provide firefighters with the nozzle techniques so that they can cool those gases down below their ignition temperature, stave off flashover, to perhaps they give themselves time to escape, maybe effect a rescue, find the seat of the fire, get other things accomplished while effectively cooling the gases. Our ultimate goal, we want to save firefighters from injury and death due to flashover. What I'd like to see is every firefighter, either the new recruit 
or the established veteran receive this flashover survival smoke recognition training to better in the future make risk versus gain decisions. Mm -hmm.